like it's been forever <laughs> since I've been on. I'm just getting off of um, a coaching call, a live coaching call with my academy. And I said, hey, I'm still up. I actually had something that I wanted to share from earlier. But um, I'm getting so caught up in that garden. Y'all don't even know all the revelation that is going on um, inside my garden when I'm, when I'm working in my garden. Like, um, one of the things that I thought about today, hey, Jackie, one of the things that I thought about today while I was in the garden, hey, guys, is um, how, you know, I think, I don't know if you all saw a broadcast that I did called, um, hey, Sherry, a broadcast that I did called, uh, the wheat and the tear, the wheat and the tear. So that came from a scripture where they said you gotta let um, the tares grow up with the fruit sometimes, so that you can distinguish between the two. So when I was in my garden today, um, I was, you know, it's getting to the point where I can kind of tell the difference in some of the plants and some of the weeds, right? And these are some of the things that have happened with me building my garden. Listen. The Lord speaks to me in my garden, children. Okay? <laughs> Listen, you got to find something that gives you peace, um, that, that you feel really, really great about. And for me, in this particular season, it has been my garden. Who, who would have thought? You know, I started the garden because I thought it was necessary. Um, one, uh, because of the healthy lifestyle my daughter and I, we have been gradually moving into anyway. And two, to eliminate having to run in and out of the stores or whatever. But it's turned out to be um, a very, very amazing time for me. And so a couple of the things that I'm noticing is if you think about a garden, you know, like I don't know how many of you have ever had a garden before. If you've never had a garden, just get you a pot, put some seeds in it and work the process. You're going to get so much revelation, right? Um, but one of the things I do or what has happened is I'm up like super early in the morning. I'm either planting more seeds. I always go to see if it's some, you know, weeds that I can pick, um, or flowers that, um, or unwanted grass or whatever that's coming up that I can pick. And it'll be really small amounts, minimal amounts that some people may not take notice of, Right. Because, um, anyway, I'll go there in a minute. But I, what dawned on me today was, when we're building something, hey, Kirsten, how are you, darling? When we're building something, oftentimes we are supposed to let the wheat come up with the tear. But if we wait too long, right, to pull the, uh, the weeds from the garden, we begin to get overwhelmed. Right, it just starts looking like way too much stuff to do. So a few things that stood out for me, which I teach this anyway, but it's just been revelatory. It's been really, really good for my heart and my soul. It's just been so good, children. Y'all get you a pot, stick you some seeds in it, and watch the process. Even if you don't want to do a garden, if you live in a condo, you don't have a lot of yard, <clears throat> get you something you can plant and grow, children. It's something about playing in the dirt, right? Because you guys know that we came from dirt, right? <laughs> you guys do know that we came from dirt. Anyway, it's a whole lot of revelation going on and I am enjoying it. Um, it feels amazing. But um, it's just like with, while you're building your business, things begin to pile up um, if you don't monitor it daily. So it may, may seem tedious to go and take a look at your uh, your finances to see what you spent the day before. It may seem tedious to take a look to see how the marketing that you did during the day was working, but those things are called measuring. And what happens for most of us is we wait too long to go and look or take an assessment for what's transpiring because it's gradually transpiring. It's not, you know, most of the things that we see, the results that we see in our life and our business are things that have gradually happened over time, that have built up, whether they're good results or bad results. But if we get in the habit of monitoring them more closely, more regularly, one, 
we don't have time for a whole lot of other stuff, <laughs> right? But we actually feel like doing what's necessary. It's when it becomes overwhelming that we don't even want to do it. So I've been picking out just the little bitty weeds um, that have been growing in my garden on a, on a daily basis. So one thing, I get up really early in the morning. It's one of the first things I do. Um, I spend time out there praying as well. But I'm looking at my process. I'm looking if I need to kind of move something a little bit or something needs watering. And so those are just some things that are really, really coming up with me that align with business. And it's not what our broadcast is about because you guys see in the title, it says knowing when to transition to something new or different. So that's actually what we're talking about today. Um, but I just had the thought, hey, Christina, I just had the thought of um, why I hadn't been on earlier because I wanted to. But I've been, I've, I've been moved from the garden to the yard planting flowers. Now, I've never been a planting flowers girl, but I'm loving it. I am absolutely loving it. It's a space of peace. So knowing when to transition to something new and different. I saw a comment. Let me read that really quick. This is something I needed to hear and have been thinking about lately. Okay. So I knew you needed to hear this, Kirsten, and I knew you had been thinking about it lately. Well, maybe not you in particular, but I am, I do discern that there are many, many people in this season who are really considering some lifestyle changes, some career changes, uh, changing their business models. If any of you are considering those things, put me in the comments. Let me know if I'm talking to the right audience. And then we're going to get into just a couple rules that I have for the broadcast. Um, one, if this is your first time, you've never been on a live broadcast with me before, um, put your name in the comments. Let me know what type of business you have, how you serve in the marketplace, what your superpowers are, if you're clear on what that is. If you're not clear, you need to see me, right? Because we got to understand what it is that we're great at and we're amazing at because it helps us to build our business. It's a part of getting clear on our brand. Number two, if you're not new, right? This isn't your first time in the rodeo. Put hashtag renew in the comments. Put hashtag renew in the comments if this is not your first time. And then thirdly, there's a little button on the left. It says share. Did you not know you can press that button? And something magic happens when you press the button. Someone else on your timeline gets to get this great information. So press the button on the left that says share, right? <laughs> Uh, someone else can use the message. And I'm going to do a quick introduction for those of you who may have run across the broadcast because someone was kind enough to share the information with you. And you're wondering, who is this lady and what is she talking about? Why is she qualified to talk to me about transitioning? First of all, I've had several transitional states in my life. I was married for 14 years. And I've been divorced now for about two and a half years. So I don't know if you guys know that's transitional. <laughs> but that was a transition. I own, also owned a brick and mortar service based business for 10 years prior to shutting my doors down since trying to connect. Okay. And deciding, let me see if I got something connected to this, to consult full time and help women just like you. Um, in their business and in their life. So those are two things um, as far as transitioning is concerned that I've done. Of course, I'm a mom. I don't know how many of you know when you have babies and children and you've been single <laughs> for so many years. You used to getting up, dressing yourself, going about your business, hopping on the plane every other week if you want to. That having children is also a transitional time. So I say that to say that transition is not always a bad thing. So oftentimes when we hear the word transition, we often think that it has to be something bad. But transition can simply be something new that you're embracing or that you're considering. And sometimes transition is you, you need to transition. Like you're sick and tired of the results that you've been having. You're sick and tired of, you know, connecting with the wrong people. Sometimes transition is uh, because there was something uh, negative happening, but that's not always the case. Right. Let me read what's being said. So um, Kirsten says lifestyle changes and starting a new business 
and moving away from work from someone else. Hashtag renew. So I am speaking to the right audience. I've been feeling this and I've probably been feeling so, um, I want to even use the word burden by what I sense in the atmosphere, what I sense in the marketplace, in, in our world by many women. Hey, Raquel, how are you, dear? Uh, the, the need to transition, the desire to transition. And so I said, if it's something I feel heavy about and I've been able to process and go through several transitions, um, I'm going to come on and, and share, um, like, how do you know when it's time to transition? It's, it's time to do something different. It's time to make new moves in your life or in your business. And so I'm sharing this uh, specifically from an educational standpoint, from my own experience. But I know sometimes when we share what we did, it, it helps someone else. Hey, beautiful, how are you? So first of all, when you start feeling sick, going back to doing whatever that thing is, the old way that you've been doing it. Hey, Miss Rhonda, how are you, dear? When you literally start feeling sick, because you got to go back and do that thing, whatever that thing is, the way that you've been doing it before, that's a, a sign that it's time to transition. It's time to embrace something new. It's time to create a vision that's bigger than what your past was, right? Miss Rhonda, hey, beautiful. When you start feeling sick, when you go, got to go back and do that thing, it, it's normally, the old way is normally a, a sign that it's time to transition. Number two, one of the things that I learned and am learning on a deeper level as I continue to embrace growing, as I continue to embrace evolving, is that there is a flow to it. Somebody put flow in the comments. Guys. There is a flow to this thing. But in order for you to get in that rhythmic flow of evolution, growing, changing, evolving, you got to be in tune with yourself. Flow, absolutely. You have to be in tune with yourself. This means um, getting still. It means getting still and listening to you. When I say listening to you, so many times, guys, do you know how many voices we listen to in today's time throughout the day? Just on social media alone, I'm not even talking about your immediate family or, you know, the five people you spend the most time with. Do you know how many voices other than our own voice that we listen to all the time? And oftentimes those voices are drowning out what it is that you're trying to say. What it is that the person, the being, your heart is really trying to tell you and really trying to say. So our evolution has a flow to it if we listen. But the only way that we can listen is if we get somewhere and sit down. Now I know <clears throat> we've been on stay at home um, for what? almost two months for, for most people, you know, places are opening back up, but how much of that time have you really spent listening to yourself, right? Um, you got to learn who you are at this stage in your life. And this is what I mean. If you've been doing the same thing for the last five years and you've been in a routine, chances are very likely that you've become another person. But your routine hasn't allowed that person to take, take the wheel. Does that make sense to you guys? Put yes in the comments if that makes sense to you guys. Most oftentimes, our routine, the daily things that we have been doing, covers up um, the person that we've become. Or it covers up who we desire to become. So um, Kirsten says yes. So you got to take time to hear what Kirsten is saying. You got to take time to hear what Miss Rhonda is saying. 
You have to take time to hear what Raquel is saying, what Jackie is saying, all of you who have joined. You have to take time to hear what Angie is saying to herself. Listen, we're inundated with voices all the time, y'all. I mean, like all the time. So one of the things that I have my clients to do when, when we do long-term work or if they come to me for a specific thing like, you know, they're in transition, they need strategy, whatever. I have them to go through a, a space of decluttering. You know, a lot of times when we think about clutter, we think about papers or things we no longer need. But cluttering is people, places, or things that no longer serve who you are now. I'm going to say that one more time. People, places, or things that no longer serve who you are now, or check this, or who you desire to become. Because sometimes your old routine, sometimes all of the other voices are keeping you from becoming the person that in your heart, you desire to become this. You desire to be the woman that's doing this. Um, your desire for your ideal day <clears throat> is not the same that it was five years ago. So ideally, you don't want to be doing the same thing that you were doing five years ago, and you got to give yourself permission. Y'all put in the comments, I have to give myself permission. Listen, we are either growing or we're dying. Did you guys know we're like, we're seeds? Listen, we're seeds. And we're either growing or we're dying. You know, one of the things I've noticed um, about what I'm planting in my garden, so y'all probably hear me talking about garden thing for a minute because I'm like in love over here. Like, I'm loving it, right? So I planted some string beans. I, I was looking up like what things, because I started kind of late, right? So I was looking up what things I could still plant in this season. And one of the things about a string bean, the seeds are, they're relatively big. And as they begin to germinate, you know, like sprout up, the seed is kind of like still hanging on to it, <laughs> right? As, as the leaves are, are coming out. And I'm noticing that, one, if we are, I notice that if my seeds are not germinating, if they're not growing, they are dying. They either doing one or the other. They're not just, most of the time, they're just not sitting there. Y'all don't hear me. They're not just sitting. When something begins to sit with no movement and no growth, it dies. And I don't mean like a literal death, but listen now, listen. If you have wrong thoughts all the time, right? If your thoughts aren't on productive things, if your thoughts aren't about growing and solutions and it's only about problems and what you don't like and, you know, we can't die from the inside. I know that's a little heavy, y'all, right? I remember, this is, I'm just being real transparent this evening. So um, as a service-based business owner, I would hear a couple of my clients say, you know, that they dealt with anxiety attacks. Now, listen, I didn't have a clue what an anxiety attack was. I mean, they said it's so normal, you know. And then I would hear random people saying, oh, I suffer, you know, from anxiety attacks. I never bothered to look it up. You know, I'm happy-go-lucky, yada, yada. Until one day, I just had this feeling that I could not explain. I was like, why? Well, I don't feel right. I called my mom. I'm like, mom, I, something don't feel right. I mean... I'm talking and everything, but something just doesn't feel right. I looked up the signs and it said anxiety attack. Now, this was at a time where I thought I had been processing, you know, I thought my stress management <laughs> game was on point, right? So I was, you know, processing things. I was still working, still moving along, putting stuff in different compartments, you know, mentally like, okay, look, put that over there. When I looked the symptoms up, I was like, oh, the devil is a whole lot. Because people have been talking about this as if it's normal. It's not normal. That is not how we're supposed to feel. 
I've never had that experience again. I don't know for sure if that's what it was, but I know that what I was reading was similar to what I was feeling and experiencing that I couldn't express. But I'm sharing that because so oftentimes we're internalizing, y'all don't hear me, we're internalizing this desire to change, this desire to see something different, and then we go and do our normal routine, and it kind of washes it over and covers it up. Does that make sense to you guys, right? So that was a promise I made myself. I was like, okay, let's figure out what's really going on here, <laughs> right? Let's get in flow with your yourself. You know, are, are you listening to too many other people? And a lot of times there's this, um, it's like some fighting on the inside of you. Amber, how are you, dear? Fighting on the inside of you, Desiree, for you to change, for you to step into the next highest version of yourself. And the resistance that you give it is, is where the frustration and everything actually comes from. So the second thing, in knowing when it's time to transition and do something new or different, um, you got to realize that our evolution has a flow if we listen. If you really start to learn who you are, now I'm not saying that you are looking to live this life that ain't nothing ever uncomfortable. I'm not saying that because growth is not always comfortable. A challenge should be uncomfortable. But when you're... It, it's something, guys, it just, you you should know. It's like, it's this thing that's like, girl, look, you don't have to do this like this anymore, <laughs> right? But when we resist it, that's when we move outside of flow. That's when we, I've learned that there's a flow to evolution and growing. And our bodies have been designed to tell us. Our hearts have been designed to tell us. Now, our heart can be deceptive. For those of y'all that read the scripture, it said the heart is, is wicked. Really, that's what it said. The heart is wicked. <laughs> hey, Nita, who could trust it? But I mean, when you know that you've been reading your word and you know, you've been consistent and you know, you're having God thoughts and something doesn't feel right, it's time for something new or something different. And you have to give yourself permission. And it'll things will start showing up. I thought about the um, when the brook dries up. You guys know the scripture that says the raven, you know, will feed you. But when the when the brook dries up and the raven ain't really feeding over there anymore, that could be a sign. <laughs> whether it's feeding you peace, whether it's feeding you the coin, you know, when the brook dries up, that might be a sign. And it doesn't mean that you have to completely throw something in the trash. Let me be clear right? But it does mean that you need to approach it differently. There needs to be a new system. There needs to be new action taken towards it. Something has to be different, right? One, because we live in a land of abundance. So peace and love and money and clients and customers and time freedom, all of that stuff should be coming in abundance in our life, right? God said he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. So when I think of abundance, I think of lacking nothing. And when I feel things that aren't in alignment with that, I mean, I usually know, okay, well, we need a new approach. Or um, sometimes we need to do it a little longer, you know? So it may be that you just haven't tried hard enough or you've only done everything that you know how to do. How many of you say, I've done everything I know to do? And if you're clear, you heard yourself say that I know to do. So sometimes it's just you need to be in connection with someone like your girl, like myself, who may know more about that particular situation who can support you in taking actions that will move you into that space. But sometimes it may be, you know, you just ain't putting in enough work. But I'm talking to people who like really feel purpose in their heart to do something different. And you're kind of like, what are some of the signs? These are things that I felt during transitional times in my life. And now I don't wait as long to shift. I don't wait as long to shift. I don't mean like, um, like maybe a program or something that I'm have, you know, doing in my business that I'm growing. I don't mean that necessarily. Right. Um, but I knew when it was time for me to transi transition from being 
a brick and mortar service based business owner. I knew that, right? I went in one day and I said, I'm closing. Yeah, I called my landlord. Um, at this point, I had been there 10 years, but at this point, I hadn't signed a new lease, so I was on month to month, right? And um, 30 days, 31 days later, I, I was done. It, it, it was, but it wasn't something that I hadn't processed. I had also started consulting. Um, and one of the reasons that, you know, when I was thinking back to all the different times that I transitioned in life, um, and my 14-year marriage was probably one of the most difficult because it was dysfunctional, right? Um, but it was vision that actually helped me to transition. Hey, Derek, how are you, dear? It was vision. So many people stay stuck in a space that no longer serves them because they lack vision for the future, because they haven't created, created a future bigger than their past. So they can't see anything that's bigger than what they're already experiencing. And so when you don't have a vision, something that's a lot further out than where you are, then you feel like you have no options. Somebody put vision in the comments. It's real heavy. Like I've been talking about vision probably for a decade now, um, but it's so important, especially in this season that we're in where many people are, you know, just looking at their life different, looking at their business different. If you are feeling stuck, it's because you have not created a vision that's bigger than the past that you used to have. So you don't feel like you have any other options. So you just continue to do that same thing and, and you dread it, right? Yes, you guys put vision in the comments. Everybody put vision in the comments. I want you guys to get it. Vision is a lot further out than where you are. Now, this is the thing about vision, guys. You got to be able to almost touch that thing. Your vision, it should be almost as if you could touch it. Yes, vision. That means you have meditated on that thing. You've strategized that thing. You've planned that thing out. Not that some of the plans won't change along the way, but it's almost like you could touch it. Like, although it's so far away, it's, it's like you feel like you can like touch that thing. That's when you have vision clarity. And that thing will help you when you face adversity. Because most of the time when we face challenges or uncertainty in our life and our business, and it's based on something that we've always done, we stay there because we don't see that there's somewhere else to go. We don't see that there's another way to do it. We can't see ourselves in another position, but vision gives you that. So whenever I face, you know, transitional times or adversity, I went back to my vision. I was like, this is not the end for me. <laughs> this is not my end, right? This is not my final destination. Hey, Tori, darling, how are you? This isn't my final destination. But only vision gives you that. Scripture says, um, without vision, people perish. Listen. You, and I just explained to you why people perish. Because they can't see anything further than what they currently are doing. What, what they've been doing for so long. They can't see themselves in another position. It's one of the first things that I work with my clients on is a vision five to ten years from where they are now. Because I know if they can't begin to develop that picture if they can't begin to work through and process and get ahas and things of that nature, then the strategies that I give them, there's nothing to hold on to, right? It's easy to go back to doing what you were doing before because you, you can't really see anything greater, right? It's one of the great, great things I do for my clients is I help them create futures bigger than their past by helping them, one, to identify their superpowers because many of you have gifts and talents that haven't been uncovered. They've been lying dormant along with dreams and things of that nature. And as a visionary, what I do is help you uncover that, help you to really see yourself in that light, right? We've been covered up. Remember I said with everybody else's voice, right? We've been listening to so many people's voices 
that we can't hear our own? When's the last time you really heard your own voice? Or did you just hear what the last person posted on social media? Did that resonate for you? And then what the, the next person posted? When's the last time you really heard your voice? Not your mama voice, not your children's voice, not your spouse voice. When is the last time you really heard your own voice? We're inundated with everybody else's voice. And in order for you to get into the flow of evolution, and evolution is a continuous thing. So it's not like you're here and this is where you're at forever and you just keep building from this same space. You're supposed to grow. You're supposed to evolve. You're supposed to embrace things differently. Y'all don't hear me, right? And, and our evolution has to flow. If we, It has a flow to it if we're listening, right? It has a flow to it if we're listening. The third thing, dad, I'm only on number two. <laughs> so you guys got um, put someone, I, I had you guys to write the word vision in the comments. If you, if you haven't written it, written, write it down in the comments. And let me explain to you guys why I get you guys to write stuff in the comments, right? If you don't write it down, it never becomes real. If you don't write it down, it never becomes real. It just competes with the other 50. Scientifically, we have 50 to 70,000 thoughts competing with the goal, the dream, the vision that we want to, to build. And so when it's something that, if it's like one word, sometimes I'll give you that to put in the comments so that it becomes embedded because faith comes by hearing, right? And so when you write it down, it begins to repeat as a thought in your mind. So you guys should have written the word flow in one comment, vision in another, moving on to number three. Knowing when to transition to something new. When you are easily distracted, when you get to a place where you just feel really distracted by everything around you, Yes, vision. When you get to a space where you feel really distracted by, I mean, every little thing is distracting you. It's hard to stay focused. You, you know, you're starting and stopping, things like that. It's a sign that you need to do something different or embrace something new, right? And here's something that you can embrace. You have to somewhat create a tunnel. Many of you have probably heard of tunnel vision, right? But you imagine you create this tunnel right? And that tunnel has to include things that enhance and improve who you are now, not the person you were five years ago. Those things have to enhance the person that you are now and who you desire to become. So when you're looking to declutter your life of distractions that are keeping you stuck and keeping you from really focusing on that voice on the inside of you, on that desire that's on the inside of you, you have to create a tunnel. And your tunnel has to be full of things that enhance who you are now and who you desire to become. So it's what you're watching on television, what you're watching on the news, what you're watching on social media, the conversations that you, you're listening to, are they in alignment with the person you desire to become? That's a question you can ask yourself. Hey, James, how are you? So when something enters your circumference, you can say, is this in alignment with the person I desire to become? Y'all don't hear me. Because what you're listening to, what you're absorbing in your eye gates, your ear gates, and your heart gate is going to determine who you become. If you haven't created a picture of your ideal day, what your life looks like at the next level. All of this is vision. I'm vision rocking with you all right now. I'm dropping some real nuggets for you all, right? If you haven't determined who that person is, what that person would be doing, who that person looks like, most likely you're not going to be able to remove distractions because you haven't created a picture. You haven't created a vision. You haven't decided who that new woman is going to be. You haven't decided what the next highest version of you is. So it's difficult. So one of the things I do is I take my clients through brand clarity, right? 
So I'm a brand strategist, but you don't see me putting brand strategist because before that, I'm a growth strategist. And branding really is more about who you are and how the marketplace sees you. So most people think it's their website, their logo, and their pretty pigs. But branding starts from an internal space. The foundation of your brand is who you are. And growing your brand is deciding who you want to become and then finding out the strategies that you need to do in order to become that person that can actually maintain, sustain, and thrive in that new goal or that new vision that you want to handle. But see, most people really want to deal with all the sexy stuff first, right? So when I talk about vision and brand clarity, it's like, yeah, right? But those that get it, those that really get it, those are the ones whose lives and businesses are transformed, right? It's one of my superpowers. So when you're thinking about um, creating this tunnel of how you spend your day and how you spend your time, guys, it ha you building you has to become a lifestyle. Like you can't take no shorts in that thing. Not when you're serious. You got to get like that picky. You got to get that petty about what you're allowing in your tunnel. So everything in this tunnel, right? So your vision is further, you know, further out and you got this tunnel that you've created and all of the information that comes in your eye gate, your ear gate and your heart gate needs to be information that will enhance who you are now, not the lady you was five years ago and who you desire to become. But first you need a picture of that, right? We go through this in my uh, academy when we design our destiny, right? We, we get a picture of what is it? So you say you want this, you need to be able to picture it. It needs to be, be to the point where you can almost touch that thing, right? You need a burning desire in order for that to happen. And you don't really have a burning desire for stuff that you don't even really know what it looked like. You may say you want it, like I want to become a millionaire. But if you haven't really created a picture of that, what becoming a millionaire is going to actually allow you to do and what it looks like, if you really haven't created like a real vision for what that's going to do, because money really is, it just allows us more opportunities. You just put a number on it, right? You just put a number on it. But if you haven't created a picture of that, then no, you won't obtain it because you'll go off to do something else because it hasn't become a burning desire because you can't see it. You can't even imagine yourself in that space. So you got to figure out who this woman is that you desire to become and start doing what that woman would be doing. Would she be listening to the things that you listen to? Would she be entertaining the things that you entertain, right? Would she be commenting the way that you comment? Would she be bothered by the things that bother you now? Who is this woman that you desire to become, right? So you really have to create a vision and you, you know you need to create like this tunnel of vision. Um, and it doesn't mean that you don't allow other things in, but they enhance the person that you are now and the person that you desire to become. That lady that's operating at the next highest version of herself that can actually handle this vision or this thing that you're wanting to, to transition into, right? So you have to create a tunnel. Um, and then the, the last thing I want to leave you with about transitioning is you can't wait till things are better or back to normal. Somebody put that in the comments, Joe. You cannot wait till things are better or back to normal. First of all, nothing ever goes back to normal. <laughs> I almost did a tongue on that one. Mm, mm, mm. Nothing ever goes back to normal. Once something has been impacted, touched, me speaking these words of empowerment over you, you'll never go back to normal. You may do some normal things, right? But the words will resound in you as a seed. So nothing ever goes back to normal. Hey, Katrina, so if you're looking for things to go back to how they were before the pandemic, it doesn't happen. It's not going to happen. And you got to figure out who this new lady is, who you desire to be as things are transitioning. One, it's so important that you're in a space of possibility, that you're in a community where people are thinking possibility and not problems. You got to find a space, your tribe, something that resonates with you, 
to invest in yourself, to be in the space of people who are talking from a space of possibility and not a space of problems, right? So I say you can't wait till things are better <clears throat> or back to normal to start. You can't wait to start a new path or um, choose a, a new uh, course in life. You can't wait till things are back to normal or things are better. They get better because you move differently. They get better while you're in action. They get better while you're implementing a strategy. So many people are saying, I can't wait till things get back to normal. Listen, what if? Well, I, I'm not, I'm going to say what if just for the sake of what I'm sharing in this moment. But let me be clear. Let's be clear. Things will not get back to normal. But what if things could go back to normal, right? Um, and what if? Things did go back to normal. The thing about it is when things were the way they were before, many of you were still complaining. And I don't mean that in a bad way or a condescending way, but many of you weren't comfortable then. And so you can't let the pandemic or what's transpiring now to fool you into thinking that that's why you want it to go back when you were ready to step into something new and different, probably before the pandemic. Y'all tap the screen if I'm telling the truth. Tap the screen if I have the right audience. The pandemic just put the icing on the cake. It just gave you a little more room to really think about it. But most of you, most of what's trans transpiring is because so many people were sending up prayer for change. Lord have mercy, y'all don't hear me. So many of you were collectively, corporately, y'all was in corporate prayer, children. <laughs> Praying the same thing. Some got to change. I want to do this thing different. So those were normally, if you have something on the inside of you that you haven't embraced, those were probably your prayers prior to the pandemic. The pandemic just brought it to the forefront, children. That's all. We were setting up corporate prayer. <laughs> right? And then, you know, hey, the, the prayers are just being answered. So my question is, what will you do in the space of time? Right? Will you look at this space and time as opportunity or will you look at it as opposition? And the way you view it, your vision for it, the way you see it is going to make a significant difference. Is it time for you to transition? So when I said you can't wait till things get better or back to normal to start a new path or a new course, sometimes you need to start where you are working on the new thing while you're doing, you know, the thing now, like that might be sustaining you or, you know, you just, just you got to do this for a minute. Like you can't. Just wake up tomorrow and change. Or you can now, listen. But, you know, it doesn't make sense necessarily for you to wake up tomorrow and change your atmosphere. But while you're still in that space, you got to start putting a lot more energy towards that thing that you really desire. Because if you're waiting for time to give you that space, time is just going to keep going. It's, it's going to do its thing like as it always does. you got to step into time. You have to step into time, right, and take your rightful place and take authority over what it is that you desire to happen differently or to happen new. You can't just, you can't like wait. You got to start working on that, right, if it's something that you really, really desire. That's my take on today, guys. You guys got any questions for me? Knowing when to transition into something new. Yes, you, you got to be able to hold it in your hand. You got it, it. It feels like you can touch it. Talking about vision. I'm reading the comments. Somebody said they give themselves permission. Before we close out, listen, don't come up here and don't contribute. <laughs> Put in the comments, I give myself permission. I give myself permission. What is it that you need? To give yourself permission to do differently, right? I want you to start operating from a space of possibility and not a space of your problems because it never solves anything. And over here, we focus on solutions, not problems. For those of you who want to deep dive into um, designing your destiny, creating strategies for that thing that you want to do, really getting clear on who you are as a brand, attracting your perfect people, going from process to profits, 
Join us inside 3D Success Academy. Enrollment is open and waiting for you. You can go to renewfullcircle.com slash 3DA. We, um, we go into a season of discovery, right? Where you really get to discover who you are, who your brand is, all that stuff. Yes, I give myself permission. Possibility, not problems. Absolutely. For those of you who want to go deeper and you really want to get clear on this thing that you're wanting to transition into, I invite you to join me. Renewfullcircle.com slash 3DA. Renewfullcircle.com slash 3DA. Give yourself permission to evolve, to transition to something new and different. If you feel led, if you feel led, and you'll know, you'll know.